Hello, my name is Todd Schoenbaum, and I hope you'll join me for my program on Dental Photography Level 1. This program is ideally suited to those of you considering starting dental photography in your practice or just starting out with dental photography in your practice. As many of you probably know, our patients are starting to expect this type of diagnostic information as part of their day-to-day -day exams. In the program, we'll talk about a number of the advantages of dental photography, and I think that you'll find through some of our simple and effective techniques that you're able to quickly and with relative ease introduce photography into your practice on a regular basis. The greatest advantage that I've found with dental photography is in communicating with my patients. So often patients maybe aren't motivated towards treatment unless it hurts. And with dental photography, we're very able to quickly and with a high degree of accuracy communicate to our patients their own particular pathology. So for example, if the patient's tooth is cracked but it, not, it does not hurt, they oftentimes don't want to seek treatment. What I've found through my own personal experience is that through the use of a few simple images, they become highly motivated to resolve their issues. So we'll spend some time talking about how to communicate with patients, how to show them clinical images of their own case, potential outcomes if it's untreated, and potential outcomes when it is treated. It's a very easy way to show them what we are capable of. Too often we talk to patients and they leave with no clear idea about where the process is going to end up. Dental photography will easily help remediate that problem. It can be a little daunting at first when coming into dental photography and deciding what equipment to select. I know there are a lot of different camera types out there. It's changing all the time. There's a lot of different components to this. We'll talk about creating a system, uh, a camera system for your practice that is highly effective in terms of both being easy to use but also producing very high quality images. When implementing the things that we talk about after the settings in the camera are performed, Typically, it's a point-and-shoot matter for our clinical photography. We'll talk a bit about flash types, how to maximize the quality of the images, whether it's through using a, a flash that works well for surgery or a different flash type that might work well for aesthetic dentistry. We'll spend a bit of time on talking about shade imagery as well. For most of you involved in the prosthetic side of dentistry, this is where the photography most quickly pays for itself. Our ability to communicate clearly with our ceramist in terms of what the preoperative and the postoperative shade should be uh, is unequaled without photography. We'll also talk a bit about some of the technical settings on the camera, although not in too, too much in depth as this is an introductory level course, I won't overwhelm you with technical details. We will go over a few minor things that will help make sure that your, even your initial images are very high quality. We'll talk a bit about the accessories as well that will help create images that you're very happy with. And what I've found is that high quality images communicate high quality dentistry. This is true in communicating with our patients and with our colleagues. And with that, I hope you'll join me for this program. I hope that you will soon be introducing dental photography into your practice and find it makes dentistry as enjoyable as I do. Thank you. For more education programs, visit the Guide Institute at www.guidedental.com.